Unlike most of my videos where we look at a script that does something, today I really just wanted to talk about on edit triggers generally. So we're going to be using a few different resources, my sheet, my script file with a few different on edit triggers, and then the documentation about simple triggers and the documentation about event objects. First and perhaps most importantly, on edit scripts are not meant to be manually run. That is just using the run button here. If you do, it's gonna fail on some error that a property cannot be read. In this case, cannot read property range of undefined. Frequently on edit trigger, we pass a value in this case, I usually just use E, and that value is created by the edit itself. And that's what we're gonna talk about in event objects, but basically without that value being passed, there's nothing for the script to do. This entire script is based on E.range, E.range. Uh, you can also use E.value. Again, we're gonna look at that in the event objects, but without that E variable, which is passed by the edit, the, nothing can happen. So rather than running it, on edit triggers run automatically whenever an edit is made. In this case, an edit is whenever a user changes a value in a spreadsheet. That's an important definition. So on edit triggers run when I, a user, manually change a value. They do not change when a script changes a value. They do not change when a formula changes a value. So for instance, if I have set up here a random number generator, and I have a few of them, if I make an edit here, it will run once for the edit on here. It will not run for all of these values changing because a user did not make an ed a change to a value, okay? It also won't run when I do other types of changes. So it won't run on highlighting. It won't run when we add or delete sheets or when we set up conditional formatting. All of these things, while we may consider them a change or an edit, they are not considered an edit by the script standard. So an on edit trigger, if you name your script on edit like this, that script will run every time that you change a value, okay? Secondly, let's talk about event objects. So as it says here, triggers let app script run function automatically if a certain event occurs. In this case, we make a change to a value. When that fires, app script passes the function event object as an argument typically called E. That's what we just talked about. That contains information about the context that caused the trigger to fire. Okay, so let's come down here and just look at, here's all the objects available in an edit. So if we pass this E value, then in there we have E.auth mode, E.old value. So you can see what was there before. E.range, which we use a lot. E.source tells us the spreadsheet. E.trigger UID. Rarely does this one come up. Um, one, it has to be installed. It cannot be a simple trigger. And then there's very specific reasons you would use that at all. E.user if that value is available based on some security restrictions, that one often is not. Basically don't rely on that one. And then e.value, the ones I most commonly use. e.old value, if I need to track what was there before. e.range, I use almost every time. e.source, I use almost every time. And then e.value is very frequent if we want to do something with that value. Okay, so there's some basics about on edit triggers run whenever a user specifically changes a value specifically in the spreadsheet. And these are the types of objects and values available. So do not run on edit triggers manually. They fail. <laughs> they will always fail if you have passed them some value.
Secondly, let's talk about building on edit triggers to do exactly what we want them to do. So for this, I've created a very simple, I just have name and assign date. So on this, if the column is one and the row is not one and the value next to or the cell next to the range I edit is blank. So I want to say that it's in this column. It is not in this row. And if I edit BA2, I want B2 to be blank. Basically, this is supposed to put the day, the time that it was assigned, and that should not be updating. So if I just say Spencer, And it puts, it actually puts the entire date timestamp. So 1223 at 103857. We have all the way to uh, the second marker in here. If I come here and put Spencer again, then we're getting another one. They are obviously a different time value, right? And importantly, if I come back here and let's update this to George, it doesn't change, right? Because of this last thing, e.range.offset. So offset, let's define that. Range one, one dot offset. So here it wants a row offset and a column offset. So how many rows down should it go and how many columns over should it go? In this case, I don't want any. Right, I want the same row, so zero row offset and one column offset. Okay. Now, let's suppose we want something more to that. Not only do we want to assign date or to when it was named, but we also want to track the status and update the status date. So that this one will change every time the status updates. This one will only go once. I wrote another script for that. If the column start is three and the row start is not one, then e.range.offset, set value, new date. Same action, but different, uh, different if statement to run it. Notice I did not include e.range.offset.getValue equals blank because I do want this one to update. So. Let's try this. New. Great, it updates. Pending. Great, it updates. And then we have 10, 40, 56. Let's mark that pending. And it did update from 10, 40, 56 to 10, 41, 08. Okay, now let's go back here and assign another one to Fred. Oh, nothing ran. Here's an important part about Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. These have the same name, right? I have two function on edits. When this runs or when it compiles, it will only consider the last function of a given name and given um, header parameter. So in this case, it sees two on edit scripts, but it's only actually considering this one. So another important thing, if you have multiple events, multiple actions that need to occur within an on edit, you need to write them as a single block. So rather than these two functions, I want this function. In this case, I have two if statements. If the column is one and the row is not one and the cell next to the edit is blank, then do the action. If column is three and the range is not one, then do the action. So if I've tied those together, I can come down here. Let's assign another one to Fred. Wonderful. That worked. And let's uh, say the status is new. Wonderful. That did too. And just to show that it's still working, 1042.52, mark that pending. Updates to 1043. 
But here I have 1042.47. If I change that to Spencer, it's still 1042.47. So here's the basis we're looking at. On edit triggers are not to be run. They will fail. Rather, they run automatically whenever a user changes a value in a spreadsheet. Again, changing a value in a spreadsheet is only counting when a user specifically, not any automatic sort of update, but when a user specifically changes a value in the spreadsheet. And we have access to all of these objects, including the range of the edit, the source of the edit, the value of the edit, and you cannot have two on edit functions working in the same sheet. Rather, you need to consolidate them into a single function in order to run properly.